Hi folks, welcome to the Man Cave and welcome to another video in this series that I've entitled Handy Hints and Tips for your BMW R1250 GS slash, there's another slash, GSA. So why don't you go and get your favourite beverage, whether that be a hot beverage or a cold beverage, pull up a chair, put your feet up and today we're going to be talking about all things to do with the BMW keyless ride system. So without further ado, let's crack on. So before we do that, just like to say, how do we get keyless ride on the GS? So a couple of ways you can do it. You can go into your dealer when you're specking the bike up for it to be built in the German factory. You can sit there with your wallet open and all the money's flowing out and the dealer's rubbing his hands together. So you can tick the comfort pack, which costs you 750 pounds. In that comfort pack is the keyless ride system. Or you can resist all the money flowing out of your wallet and say, I just want a bog standard GS but I'd really love the keyless ride system. While he can work out the product code for that, I think he could do this. So he can tick that box for the keyless ride and then that will cost you 285 pounds. So that's one way you can do it. The other way you can do it is you go into the dealer and there'll be a GS on the showroom floor with keyless ride on it. You can get a second hand GS, which has got keyless ride fitted to it. You can get spare keys for these. So certainly with the emergency key, you can go into your dealer, you can produce certain documentation, which you have to do for the dealer then to order uh, either the radio key spare or the emergency key spare. And this key will cost you 175 pound for a spare one. And then that key will cost you 35 pounds for that one. It normally takes about 10 days to spin that around from ordering it to it coming into the dealership. But yeah, so certainly the emergency keys, if you've got more than you know one jacket that you sort of go into your garage and pop a jacket on, rather than keep moving the emergency key from one jacket to another jacket, you can actually get a couple of those and then pop them in the jackets that you use on a regular basis. So the BMW keyless ride system, exactly what is it? Well, it's a system where you don't have to put a key in anything basically. Hence the reason why it's a keyless system. So BMW give you a radio key. There's a little battery in here. It's a CR2032 battery. If you want to click on the link up here, and I'll put it in the description box down below. Go and have a look at that. That shows you how to change that battery inside here. It takes about 30 seconds to do that. So this radio key talks to the motorbike, and then once everything's happy, it will allow you to turn the bike on and off. You can open the fuel filler cap, and then you can turn the steering lock on, turn the steering lock off, all without having to insert anything into any form of barrel. So that's the reason it's called a keyless system. So I've had the system on my bike now from you and I've had the bike for eight months, haven't had any problems with it whatsoever and I'm a big fan of the keyless system. And another thing from BMW, they do say uh, when you've got these keys on your person, don't put them together in a pocket as it will cause interference. So you put one in a lower pocket and then the spare, I normally put the emergency key on the inside uh, pocket of one of my jackets. And yeah, so don't put them together. So that's how we get keyless ride on the BMW. So let's crack on with the video. So the only reason they give you a blade on the key is for you to put it into the seat lock, turn it to the left to release the rider seat, turn it to the right to release the pillion seat. And if you're fortunate enough to have the GPS cradle mount, you can lock and unlock the cradle mount with that blade as well. And also BMW will give you a plastic emergency key. There's actually no battery in here and that has the same functionality of the blade on your radio key. So how does the system work? Well, we've already spoken about the radio key and I'd just like to point out, you can press these two buttons on the front of the radio key, nothing will happen. You can press those all day long until you're blue in the face, until the cows come home. Nothing will happen unless you've got a BMW alarm system fitted or you've got a central lock locking system fitted for your cases. And I guess that will be on the RT. So basically this radio key talks to the motorbike. There's an aerial called a ring aerial located around the on off button on the bike. And then in cases of an emergency, if the battery on this goes flat or if you lose that key and you have to then revert to your emergency key, there is an antenna located on the underside of the rear wheel arch. We'll talk about that very shortly. And then finally, you've got the steering lock mechanism and then the fuel filler cap mechanism. So that is all the components of the keyless ride system. So how do we use it all? So let's talk about normal daily use of the keyless ride system. So you've got your key, you've got a nicely charged battery in here. So this key has to be within one meter range 
of that ring area which is located around the on off button so as long as that's the case you can then press the on off button the tft is going to spring into life go through all its safety checks and then you are good to ride the bike when you finish the ride all you need to do is a short press on that on off button and then that will turn the engine off and then shut down the tft pretty simple really so if you're one of those folks that likes to use the steering lock i'm not all you need to do is once you switch the bike off is then turn the handlebars fully towards the left hand side and then it's a long press on the on off button you're going to hear the steering lock mechanism whir into life it's going to fire the steering lock pin out and then once that noise stops you can take your finger away from the button and then you can walk away with the steering lock engaged when you return to the bike all you need to do is it's a long press on the button you're going to hear the steering lock mechanism whir into life again and then that pin is going to be uh, retracted into its housing and then you can move the handlebars and then away you go so you can actually unlock it in a couple of ways actually so if you're in your garage and you just want to move the bike you know outside and you don't want the tft screen to spring into life what you can do is just a, a long press kind of on that uh, on off button you're going to hear the steering lock mechanism spring into life and then as soon as you hear that just release your finger and then all that will happen is the steering lock function will be uh deactivated so that you can move the handlebars but the tft screen won't fire up um, it will only fire up if you continue to hold your finger on the on off button so the pin will uh, retract and then with your finger still pressed on the on off button it will then go into the sequence of opening up the tft go through all its checks and then you can ride the bike away so two ways you can sort of deactivate the steel knot just came to your garage and just practice with the thing so you know how how the thing functions so the final thing to talk about then is the fuel filler cap using the keyless ride system so big thing here folks is the tft screen has to be switched off it has to be off this is a safety issue as clearly they don't want you to be putting fuel into the petrol tank whilst electrics are still switched on so yeah tft screen has to be switched off and then you've got two minutes to then unlock and open the fuel filler cap. So we're gonna do this in two stages. So just imagine we've gone into the petrol station, we've turned the uh, bike off by pressing the on off button, TFT screen has gone black, and then we've got two minutes, yeah, two minutes to just open the fuel filler cap. So we're gonna do, do this in two stages, as we can see here on this video. So we're just gonna lift the tab up on the cap very slightly, and we're gonna hear a bit of a clicking noise, and that means that the mechanism has unlocked the fuel filler cap and then second stage is just move it fully forward and then open the fuel cap so folks do not force this little tab up because it may mean you're going to break something so listen to that first click as you lift it up slightly and then once you hear that click you can move it fully forward and then safely the fuel filler cap will be open and you are good to chuck a load of fuel into the bike so the good thing about this that two minute window Basically, if you are desperate to nip to the loo at a motorway service station, you can turn the TFT off, you can run, run into the toilets, and then your pillion passenger can then open the fuel cap and then continue putting fuel into the bike, even though you've run off with a key and you're desperate to go to the loo. So the other way you can open the fuel cap is if you've ridden into a petrol station and there's about four cars in front of you, and it's a warm day and the engines generate a lot of heat you can just turn the engine off depower the tft screen so you've got a black tft in front of you and then as long as your key is within one meter of the on off button that loop aerial then you can just sit on the bike just sort of pedal it forwards until it's your turn at the petrol pump and as long as you're within one meter it could be you could be there for 30 minutes it doesn't matter 30 minutes or so and then all you need to do is then just when it's your turn just lift that tab up a little bit wait for the click and then move it fully forward and then open the petrol cap and then you are good to go so let's now talk about radio key problems so if the battery is totally flat when you go to the bike and you're within that one meter when you press the on off button then nothing will happen the tft won't spring into life all that will happen is in the bottom left hand corner of the tft screen you're going to get a red flashing light so that means the battery is flat so go and put a new battery in it so i would recommend that you have a little stash somewhere of those cr2032 batteries you can get them on get them on amazon 
for about £4.50 or something for a packet of four of them. So I would leave you know, a few in your garage or your kitchen or wherever and then just pop one uh, in your jacket together with the emergency keys. So 30 seconds, you'd put a new battery in there. So yeah, if you go to the bike and you get that red flashing light, it means that the battery is flat in here. So or there's a problem with the key or simply the key is not within the meter and it's outside of the range. So either way, just try and move the key a little bit closer to the on off button. And that may be just that it's outside of that one meter distance or it just can't see it properly. So just move, just reposition yourself and then try again. And if it's definitely the battery, you know, because you're sensible, you've already got a stash of new batteries around and you can just pop a new one in there as per the uh, video in the description down below and in the card that I put up here previously. So yeah, so that's the first problem you may get is the key might not talk to the uh, on off uh, button because the battery's flat or thereabouts. So all the battery problems then, so you're riding along quite happily. Um, I've had my bike for eight months. Uh, I have no, I've had no issues with the batteries whatsoever. I would suspect you're gonna get at least 12 months out of a battery on here. So those of you that have changed the batteries, uh, put any comments in the comment section down below. Actually, I'd certainly like to know how long do you get out of one of those CR2032 batteries for normal use, actually. So yeah, please pop them in the comment section down below so that everybody knows how long these batteries are gonna last. So yeah, if you're riding along the motorbike, uh, what will happen is when you get to about 50% battery charge in here, then on your TFT screen, you'll just get a little message coming up to say, oi, your battery's down to 50%. So yeah, just keep an eye on it, go and change it straight away. Um, if you don't change it straight away, then as you continue your ride sort of weeks, months later, uh, you'll get another message come up on the TFT screen and it will go something like, listen mate, I've told you that your battery was down at 50% a little while ago. Your battery's lower than that now. I actually don't know how low the battery is. Having started the bike with the engine within a metre, and then I've put the key on the on the worktop here. I wheel the bike out there and then I ride off into the sunset. There's, the system will then say, um, yeah, listen mate, I've been talking to the key and I can't find it anymore. And it will flash up on the TFT screen. It will say this message and it will say, when you turn the bike off, we, won't be, we may not be able to turn it back on again because it thinks it's, you know, it can't see the key basically, but we'll come on to the emergency key and how we use it very shortly. So yeah. So, so yeah, there, there's, I think there are all the warnings that will flash up uh, on the TFT screen, just to let you know that there are potential uh, problems with the battery in the key unit itself. So let's talk about what happens if you have a flat battery in your radio key or you lose your radio key. So a couple of things, if you lose the radio key, all is not lost because you're a sensible chap or chapess. And before you rode your bike, you remember to put the emergency key uh, on the inside of your jacket because you knew that you may lose your key one day. So if you're a sensible chap or chapess, all you need to do is with your emergency key, go to the rear of the bike and then hold this plastic emergency key up to the uh, antenna. And as you can see here on the video, so just hold the key up flat and then just reach across and then turn the on off button on and then the TFT should spring into life and then you should be able to continue your journey having used the emergency key. It's basically like a passport reader. That's, that's how I sort of think of it in my head. The antenna sends a current through there and then they, they shake hands and say, yeah, I authorize the bike to be switched on and then turn the bike on. If it's just a case of the battery on here is flat, just do the same thing. Just hold it up against the antenna on the rear wheel arch hold it there, reach across, and then press the on off button, and then the TFT will spring into life. But what I would recommend is just keep that emergency key with you at all times, because people do lose their keys from time to time. So that sort of covers how we get the bike going when you've got a flat battery or you've lost the main radio key. But one thing I will say is get down to your garage and practice taking the battery out of this and then practice using that without the battery in it on the on the antenna on the rear wheel arch and also using the emergency key as well oh yeah so the other thing we need to do if if that locking mechanism for the fuel filler cap has failed for whatever reason i haven't i've had no problems with mine uh, some people say every now and again you should sort of uh, wipe it um, and keep it clean but 
if it if it ain't if it ain't broke don't touch it that's my motto so if yeah if you have got problems with it maybe just try and clean it a little bit um yeah i don't know it's going to speak to your bmw technician they may be able to give you a bit more information but yeah if you've got problems with it as some people have had on youtube go and have a look at those uh, then under your pillion seat, I don't know if you've checked your underside of your pillion seat, you've got a couple of BMW tools. You've got the screwdriver and the black handle. Uh, unbeknown to you, possibly, you've got a Torx T25 on the other side if you can't see it. So just take, take that black handle screwdriver out, whip the screwdriver bit out, and then you've got the Torx T25. So just undo these two here. And this is obviously if the fuel cap just will not unlock. Again, don't force it because you are going to snap something. So get that screwdriver out, undo these two Torx T25s. Careful not to drop them in the fuel tank. And then what happens is the fuel cap itself is still in the lock position. So all you need to do is you don't have to lift the tab, just uh, open the fuel cap and then refuel. And then when you want to uh, ride away, then just hold the petrol cap down firmly and then put the two screws back in that small piece that you've removed and then you are good to go. So that's another way in case you have a failure of the fuel filler cap mechanism. So folks, I think we've about covered everything on there. So as ever, if you've got any comments, make them in the comment section down below. I don't think there's much else to say about the keyless ride. I really like it. Go and have a play around with it. Watch the video again. Um, but what I would strongly recommend is you go and get an Optimate charger. Uh, put it on your battery so your battery is in the best condition it can be in because these bikes got a, le a lot of electronics on it and they can always throw a little bit of a wobbly moment and cause you issues if you're out and about on the road and the thing won't start. So to have the bike with all electronics on it in their peak performance, just go and put a charger on it or some kind of battery conditioner. And then you know every time you get on the bike, you've got a fully charged battery and all these gadgets will work properly. As ever, ride safe and we'll see you again soon in the next video or the next handy hints and tips. Hope it's been of some use to you. See you again soon. I'm going to play with my doggies. Take care. Bye.